It's the ugly side of flower farming that not everybody really wants to talk about. What happens when you're not making sales and you're not seeing the progress that you're hoping to see? You do things differently. Here's what I'm doing this week. Hey, it's Kristen with Shifting Roots and this is another episode of Backyard Business where I take you through a first year flower farmer, the struggles, the successes, and just like a real sneak peek into what it's really like to try to take your flower farming passion, do it on a small scale and start to make a little bit of money with it. So if you wanna follow along with the journey, you can follow me on my normal Instagram profile, Shifting Roots, and then there's the one specifically for this flower project, which is Shifting Roots in Bloom. And if you live in or around Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, I am here for your local flower needs. garden is really starting to come into its own but there's just one problem I'm not really making sales um, I just thought by now I had a big enough following I've gotten the word out enough and that the beauty of my arrangements would be sort of enough to convince people to sell I haven't been pricing them too high but unfortunately last week's sale I didn't make a single thing so I did feel a little bit bad, but instead of dwelling on those type of thoughts, think what business is, it's all about numbers and it's all about data. So it's just another week of data and I decided that I need more of an audience. I have a numbers problem. So on my Instagram account that's devoted to just the flower business, Shifting Roots in Bloom, I have around 500 followers, which sounds like a lot and it sounds like a great base, but if I'm not making sales, I feel like there might be the wrong mix of people there, or maybe they're on holidays or whatever it is. It's just not enough numbers to get the sales that I want to get. So if I have a numbers problem, how am I going to fix it? Well, the first thing I thought is the most obvious is to tell your friends and family that you're going into this business. I'll just share it once see what kind of response I get. So the nice thing was my friends and family, a couple of them did give me some follows that were local, but no one particularly bought anything, which is fine. Okay, so then the next strategy was to do a giveaway. So giveaways are great because they can really build excitement about your business and help you find people in your local area as long as you make those parameters with your giveaway that it has to be someone in the area where you live and so I did the giveaway and I got a few more followers and I also followed up that giveaway with a sale a few days later nothing um, and it didn't even get me the amount of followers that I thought it would get so then I had to think hmm what do I do now obviously I've exhausted my audience so I decided I was going to try and partner with some local influencers. So the first local influencer was awesome, sent her a bouquet. She gave me some great shout outs, lots of new followers, but still no sales. But you know what? That's not her fault. She's not there to guarantee me sales. Her job was just to help get the word out, which she totally did. She did a fantastic job. And the thing is, I think it also is going to take more than one exposure to her audience for people to be familiar enough with me to the point that they might consider purchasing some flowers. So I'm going to use her a couple times more. Um, I'll also be hiring another influencer and I think I'm going to search around and maybe I'd like to probably hire up to four influencers 
just to get my stuff out to other audiences in the local community. And even if that doesn't make sales this year, I know from my music teaching business that the work you do in year one, even when it feels like nobody is buying anything, nothing is going right, that work you do is literally sowing the seeds for your success next year. So keep forging ahead. I got asked by a local neighborhood media group if they could do a video interview about me and my flower business. So I'm hoping that will be a huge help. And the beautiful thing about that is because it's specifically within the neighborhood, it should hopefully bring some local customers. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to keep making bouquets because people still need to see my body of work. They don't know whether stuff is selling or not. So I'm going to keep making bouquets. I'm just still going to keep posting them. Yesterday, I picked up some of these gorgeous pro cut sunflowers from another flower farmer in the area. I didn't grow pro cuts this year and my sunflowers aren't doing that hot. So thankfully, Monica at 316 Flower Co. She lives actually very close to me on the acreage. And so whenever I'm working at the garden out there, it's so easy to pop over to her and be like, hey, Monica, what do you got this week? And just grab a few blooms. And so I think these are going to inspire this week's fake wedding bouquet. So we've got these gorgeous sunflowers to work with. I picked up a few different hues. I thought that would be fun to play with. Some cress, some frosted explosion grass, and then a little bit of goldenrod that I had left over from last week. In my own yard, I also have a little bit of pincushion, some nice white stuff, maybe some rebecca, and I have tons of status. So I think that's gonna make it into the bouquet too. I have not been really loving this yellow status. Well, it kind of looks better on camera than it does in real life, but I think it'll look amazing in this bouquet. Then I think I found a use for my amaranth. We don't have much white in this bouquet, so I think I'm gonna grab a few of these snaps too. They're just the rocket ones, but they're very pretty. Originally, Monica asked me if I wanted all of these green bits trimmed. I said no, because I wasn't 100% sure what I was doing that with them. But now I think for a wedding bouquet, these little green bits have got to go. Ta-da! So I've run into a bit of a problem, but I'm actually really glad then that I've done this trial bouquet because the sunflowers aren't exactly sitting like up here the way I would have envisioned them to or may maybe would have wanted to. So that means I'm gonna have to change the strategy of how I'm making the bouquet. But otherwise, like this is not totally beautiful. I think I'm gonna undo it and do it again. Um, I'm pleased with how the ingredients all look. It has really nice feel to it. Anyway, let's try again. Feeling pretty good about this. Uh, love this. I'm going to talk a little bit more in the morning. I'm losing my light, but I'll wrap it up and take some gorgeous shots in the morning and tell you how I'm feeling about the different materials. Good morning, friends. It's the next day. I've got some lace to wrap that bouquet in and we're going to finish it up, put on any finishing touches. I've got my dress on that's white, so it sort of looks when I take pictures like, oh, it could be a bridal bouquet. And we're gonna document everything and then put that bouquet up for sale and see if we have any better luck. I always like to take one last look at my bouquets. Um, this Snapdragon is just not gonna sit where I want it to, so that guy's out. Same with this status. And then we'll wrap it up.
also I grabbed some gorgeous new pails from the dollar store here in town. Are these pretty? Um, I actually found a surprising number of things at the dollar store that you can use as a flower farmer. So I will um, link those up in the description for you. And uh, I think that'll be a really cool video. Now, obviously, if you're a bigger flower farmer, you probably want to buy your stuff more in bulk. But for those of us who are just doing it at the backyard scale, there are surprising amount of things you can get in the dollar store. So even though we're mostly here for the flowers, it's really important to pick that greenery and that filler. So I'm gonna help myself to some of those bushes back there and get some gorgeous clippings. So even though it feels like summer's almost just begun, I'm already starting to think about seeds for next year. So before I pick the straw flower, I cut off some of the heads that are sort of starting to explode, like these guys, and these guys will turn into next year's seeds. Okay, so the greens are done. I might add to them a little bit tomorrow, but this is going to be my greens that we're using up here a little bit and show you what we've got. So some lovely nine bark. This also comes in a lime color. We have a few tomato clippings, some forsythia, some spirea, however you pronounce it. And we have some cosmos because we have lots of cosmos here. So I thought let's get some for greens too. Dill is great because you get huge bang for your buck. I mean, Look how big that is. And you get the herb too. Next up is a status. I'm gonna take almost everything here because it will come again. So I know I've been hating on this status, but now that I see it like all in a pretty bunch, like look at that. How pretty is that? Except for this highlighter yellow. This highlighter yellow can go. Like nobody needs that. So this is a perennial that my mom grows and I actually don't 100% know the name of it. I'm wondering if this is burplorum, but I'm not 100% sure. So if you know, can you put it in the comments? Cause I love it and I wanna grow more of it at my own house. Next up, I'm gonna grab some Maltese Cross. This perennial is a little controversial. A lot of people aren't a fan of that hot red, orangey color, but I like it. I'm gonna try it. Okay, filler pail is done. Okay, now we're gonna grab our supporting flowers. We actually don't have a lot of hero flowers. So they might go in the same bucket as this one, but as I said, I just sort of like to have an order with mine. So we'll get the spikes and we'll get the supporting. the supporting flowers aren't they gorgeous so as you saw we have our straw flowers our cosmos the calendula and the bachelor's buttons so one thing about the supporting flowers is they're really not fun to pick like i know that i'm gonna have to go in here afterwards clip out any blooms that aren't looking pretty um stem light isn't fantastic now of course i don't live with my mom so I didn't get to some of these at the ideal time. And that's okay, we're still doing this at a small scale. I'm gonna be making some 10, $15 arrangements. They're just a little shorter, so it's okay that I have some of these shorty stems. All right, spikes and heroes and we're done. The stock and the delphinium are so gorgeous. They smell so beautiful, but the stem length, not fantastic. And even the stock, like I'm gonna have to really test this tomorrow see if this is going to be strong enough to hold up but it's so pretty you can't blame me for trying
So quick update, um, this is my third delivery of the night. Um, definitely the changes I made were really good changes to make. People are loving the hand tied bouquets and I'm actually almost sold out of them, which is crazy. And yeah, I'll let you know tomorrow the final totals, but really excited and really happy that I could turn things around. Good morning. So I'm gonna give you a quick little update on how that last sale turned out. So the sale in Humboldt went fantastic. I sold out. I still can't believe that I went from zero sales the week before to sold out and I booked a wedding. So just goes to show you how crazy this flower farming journey can be. But you know, if something's not working, just change it up. So the key this week was the people want hand tied bouquets. They don't seem to want mason jars. I'm going to further test this throughout the rest of the season. But if that's the case, then I'm just going to change a little bit of how I do things going forward next year. And as always, I'm sure you want to know what's the grand total. So this week I made a total of $160, which is some nice extra money finally, especially coming from just small scale gardening. All right, friends, if you're not already following the backyard business playlist, you definitely want to follow that one. Watch all those videos, get caught up on the flower farming journey. You can follow me on IG or Facebook where I show up every single day showing you exactly what's happening in my garden in real time. And if you want to follow specifically the flower farming journey, then that's shifting roots in blue. All right. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.